If we're not winning 100% of the time, how do we still make money and how do we handle the fact that we don't win 100% of the time? And this one's going to be all about the data, isn't it? Yeah. Analytical is going yeah. to love it. So we actually win more than 50% of the time. We actually win about 80% plus of the time with our strategies, if you're following our criteria. Today, we're going to be looking at something very, very interesting and all about how it is that random distribution plays a role in your trading result. That's part of how we walk hand in hand with people through their mentorship, making sure we're tailoring the support around them. So I know that at some point, I'm going to have a bad run of trades. It might mean I don't make any profit that month. It might mean I've just got a bad week, but we know we're going to have a bad run, but it's okay. We can be calm about it. We can relax about it. And we still have to follow the process to then get those winning trades and those really nice runs as well. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Star Trading Podcast with me, Lewis. And me, Sophie. And today, we're going to be looking at something very, very interesting and all about how it is that random distribution plays a role in your trading results. Mm, this one's going to be all about the data, isn't all it? All about the data, The yeah. analytical is going yeah. to love it. Yeah, they are going to love it. And it's also a real good opportunity to show kind of a bit of the reality around trading because we know, we always say in Star Trading, you never win 100% of the time. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean if we're not winning 100% of the time? How do we still make money? And how do we handle the fact that we don't win 100% of the time? So we're going to cover the data and the psychology. Yes. Love it. Um, how has your week been this week? My week's been good. Um, it's nearly my mum's birthday, so we've got something planned to do for her, which it's nice and fun. It's her. Oh, I'm not going to tell you how old she is. She'll tell me off. Twenty first. Twenty first birthday. <laughs> yes. Um. So she had a big birthday. I won't name which one. Last year. So we went to Portugal last year. So it'll be a little bit more low key than that. Nice. Um. But it's to be really lovely. Yeah. Very yeah. good. What well, about you? we've still got loads of family around because we've just had this big family reunion party, yeah. and it's just been. It's just lovely. Like just being around your family is my favourite. Are you sick of the chocolate and cheese yet? No, absolutely not. Definitely not. No. <laughs> is it even possible to get sick of chocolate and cheese? No. They say that cheese is actually like cocaine in terms of the part of the brain that it triggers. I That's think. Why it's I addictive. think chocolate is like that for me. It just yeah. makes me happy. It just yeah. chills me out and relaxes me. Yeah. I can believe that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, talk to me about why in star trading, if we win and we lose the same amount of trades, we're up. Yeah. Like, how does that make sense? So, really good question. So basically what you're saying there is if we win 50% of the time, the reality is within star trading, our strategies are really good. So we actually win more than 50% of the time. We actually win about 80% plus of the time with our strategies, if you're following our criteria. Mm -hmm. um, so first of all, we have a better win percentage than the average, but even with that, we still have losing trades. But if we were to only have a 50% win-loss ratio, so only win 50% of the time, we would still end up being profitable traders, which is very exciting. And you're looking at me because I need to say the reason why. So the reason is because of uh, risk to reward. Mm -hmm. So how much have we got potential loss on the trade versus how much potential um, gain profit do we have on the trade? So our absolute minimum is one for one, which means if we win 50% of the time, we lose 50% of the time, because of the risk to reward ratio we have on all of those trades, we would actually break even at that point. However, that's our minimum. Mm -hmm. So if we have a higher reward, say 200 pounds to our potential loss of 100 pounds, we can actually end up still in a profitable position even if we lose more than we win. Mm -hmm. Amazing. So it's about just saying, if I lose a trade, I would lose, for example, five pounds. But if I win a trade, we increase our ratio a bit and I would win six, seven, eight, nine, ten pounds. Exactly that. And we do that consistently. Yeah. So during the training on the course, we, um, we're shown the coin game. Yeah. So can we do a little demo of the coin game to really illustrate we can indeed, this. yeah. Would you like the European coin game or would you like the Great British pound coin game? Let's be continental. Let's be continental. <laughs> I will pick up my euro coin then. Okay. <laughs> it makes no difference to the actual game. It's just a different coin. So uh, I don't know why I've gone for the smallest coin in the world for this, but will you be chief record yes, keeper? Yes, yes, yes. How Brilliant. many are we going to do? How many uh, I think we'll just do 10. Okay. Let's not bore the world. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll do 10. Um, and what's really important about this game, and by the way, play along at home. It'd be really good to kind of hear your results as you do this as well. So play along. Let us know what your results are too. Um, and this, by the way, is definitely falling into the category of gambling not trading mm -hmm. because we are just literally doing it on the flip of a coin um yes we'll, we have no strategy we have no coin. strategy <laughs> this is no i mean unless i like give a little rub on my shirt mm. little blow or blow a kiss <sighs> hope for a heads or tails does it even have a head no so we've got tails or the world okay yeah we'll let's say go the world winning is the world winning is yes the world I like is the alliteration. okay uh so number one 
is a win. Okay. Number two is a win. Okay. Yes, I like it. Number three is a loss. Okay. Oh no, I'm so depressed. I've had one losing trade. <laughs> this is what people are like sometimes. Take the emotion out of it. Just let the results be the results. Mm -hmm. Next one. Win. I mean loss. Loss, sorry. Okay. Win. Win. You've got a good toss. Yep. Loss. Okay. Three for three. Win. Nice. I'm, just, I'm so focused on having to catch these. <laughs> uh, loss. Yep. Four for four. Loss. Okay. How many have I got left? One left. One left. Right. Let's see what we do. Oh, oh. And the winner one is... It's a loss. Okay. Cool. Brilliant. So we're six losses and we're four wins. Now remember, we have a... I can't believe I dropped it on the last flipping coin. <laughs> Typical. Got carried away. So the way that we trade at Star Trading is the maximum risk we would have per trade is 1%. So every single one of those trades has a minimum... Sorry, a maximum loss of 1%. So if we add up all of our winners, say they were all just a one-for-one one risk reward, so we're just doing our minimum, How, what would our total winning pot come to? So should we say £10 for each one uh, to make it real? Yeah, yeah. So we've got £40 worth of winnings. £40 worth of winnings. And again, 1% maximum risk, so all of our losers are also worth 1%, mm -hmm. worth £10 each. So what's our total losing? 60 So what does that give us a total overall profit or loss? Uh, loss. Loss of how much? So we've won 40 and we've lost 60. So we're down 20 quid. Down 20 quid. Okay, brilliant. So um, again, remember we're not following any strategy, but this still proves the point. So if we now increase our risk reward, so we keep our risk the same at 1% mm -hmm. and we increase our reward to just two for one instead mm -hmm. of one for one. So now all of our losses stay the same. They stay at 1%. Yeah. So each one is worth 10 pounds. And our winners now, when they win, become 2%, not just 1%. What would our total win pot be? So we've now won £80 yep. and we've lost £60. Which means we're now in profit of... We're up 20. And so we had a win percentage, so four wins to six losses. We have a win percentage of 40%. So even though we had more losers trade by trade than we had winners, we're still in a profitable position because of risk to reward. Mm -hmm. So that's why we always have a minimum of 1% or more. Yeah. And that will always ensure that even if you lose, you're going to be up. Exactly. That sounds yeah. good. And that is why we consider ourselves at Star Trading low risk, but high reward. And remember, this is literally on the flip of a coin. So there is no strategy implemented whatsoever. Yeah. Um, we know that if we have strategy in place, we should be winning more than we're losing. Mm -hmm. um, but still, we don't win 100% at the time. Yeah. Now, what do you notice about the wins and the losses as well? Um, no set pattern. It was win, win, lose, lose, win, lose, win, lose, lose. <laughs> yeah, zero pattern, right? Yeah. The, what we call that in trading terms is random distribution. Mm -hmm. So over, imagine this now over a hundred trades. Imagine this now over a thousand trades. You've got no idea when those winners are going to turn up. You've got no idea when those losers are going to turn up. So how do we stay safe? Again, this is another reason why we only risk one percent of our account, because in the past I've had really bad losing runs of trades generally after really good runs of winning trades mm -hmm. and i've had maybe 15 trades in a row lose so let's just do some simple maths again so we teach one percent maximum risk what's the what's the hit to my account in terms of percentage if i've got 15 losses in a row it's 15 percent loss not comfortable not enjoyable not fun whatsoever but i know that that can happen that's part of random distribution so if i was risking two percent mm -hmm. which some people teach to do or even five percent as some people teach to do, or even ten percent as some people who are ridiculous and absolute madmen teach to do i'd be in a very different position so yeah. let's back step just for one second to if i was risking two percent two percent loss over 15 losing trades equates to 50 not 15 percent to 30 percent that's a massive hit mm -hmm. that's going to be very hard to recover from financially um and emotionally as well in one sense, it's not too hard to recover from financially because you can still just trade your way out of that. But it's going to take longer and it's going to be harder to do mm -hmm. than if you're lower risk and you're only at 15%. So which one would you rather be? 1% or 2% risk? Uh, one. Yeah. <laughs> Very much one. Yeah. And so we see this in star trading, particularly with people who are new in. Sometimes mm. they have two losers in a row, maybe three losers in a row. 
and they start to really panic and it affects their emotions and they're only risking one percent sometimes they're risking risking even lower than that because they they are quite nervous mm -hmm. and we need to build mm -hmm. up their confidence and their skills so that's part of how we walk hand in hand with people through their mentorship making sure we're tailoring the support around them so when that happens um what we need to do is step back to our strategy and see right with my strategy, with my back testing, we always talk about back testing. Mm -hmm. How did that perform? Yeah. What was the random distribution there? Because even your back testing is going to show you that you have random distribution. And so you can think by looking at your back testing data, okay, well, what's kind of like the worst case scenario, right? Worst case scenario is I have X number of trades lose in a row. What's the best case scenario? Okay, I get X number in a row. So I know that at some point I'm going to have a bad run of trades. Mm -hmm. It might mean I don't make any profit that month it might mean I've just got a bad week but we know we're gonna have a bad run but it's okay we can be calm about it we can relax about it and we still have to follow the process to then get those winning trades and those really nice runs as well yeah and I loved doing the back testing and having you know 50 60 examples of trades and you can see oh, okay there's maybe three or four losers in a row but overall we're up overall they're good and if that happens in real life, you are prepared for it. Exactly. Yeah. One of the one of the biggest frustrations for me, which is a silly frustration, it's not a real one, but I would love everybody when they first start trading our, our strategies, their first few trades are winners. I would love that. Mm. But unfortunately, I've got no control over that. I don't control the market. Sometimes that is the case. Sometimes they get a losing trade or a couple of losing mm. trades. And they just have to be patient within that process and keep taking good quality trades because that's what sets you apart from people that consistently lose money versus people who consistently make money is the people who make money stick to the strategy they follow the star trading method and the principles yeah and and just talking about um taking your first trade i noticed on the discord group this um this week there were um, one or two people who were saying i'm looking for my first live trade now and they had that extra layer of support from the group because they were doing screenshots saying, what do you guys think of this? What do you think of my setup? And it kind of gives you a bit of a buffer because a couple yeah. of people said, actually, no, I wouldn't take that one because of this. So that took them away from a loss, which was quite nice. Yeah. So it's good to have the training. It's good to have the back testing. And then you've got that extra layer of the community just yeah. to kind of idiot check it or just give you that confidence yeah um, and it's sometimes it's quite hard to do that it's hard to put a screenshot in and say what do you think it is yeah you do have to be brave to do it because yeah. it's not that it's personal but you yeah. are feeling like you're exposing yeah. your approach to the market mm. or maybe you've made a mistake but it's always worth doing because yeah. it it teaches you and, and there's no one negative in there there's no. really it's a really encouraging nice place to be yeah yeah, yeah, they're amazing. Yeah. Speaking of the community, we've had a question this week, haven't we? We have indeed. We've had a, a question come in from one of uh, my many thousand, that's a lie, Instagram <laughs> followers. Um, so I'm just going to play it for everybody. And uh, then we're going to answer the question. Da -da -da. Let me find him. So shout out to George. Thank you very much for sharing the question with us. Uh, I don't know if he realised he's going to be played, um, but it's only his voice. It's fine. Hi, mate. Um, so... Essentially, what my question is that I'd like you guys to answer, how do you deal with what I call the noise of people that basically aren't in the know, right? So every time you speak to people about trading markets or trading Forex or even property investment or anything like that, you get all of these red lighters going, oh, that's risky, oh, I wouldn't do that, oh, star trading, that sounds like a scam, a scam, you know what I mean? I know it's not a scam, you know it's not a scam, you're providing good education, um... It's just frustrating that like everyone you speak to or any you even happen to mention or anything like that and it's just like oh no 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 god no stay away it's a scam you must be silly and i'm like do i just not tell anyone but i just like you because you probably had more experience of dealing with people like that because they're very skeptical just wondered what your thoughts were brilliant brilliant question yeah um i, I mean i lived that life as well um, when I first started learning to trade, I was working head office of a retail company um, and people told me I was mad. They told me I was crazy. They even told me they wanted me to fail. Uh, my parents thought I was mad and crazy. When I told them I was going to quit my job so I could trade full time, um, my dad begged me not to, but it was too late. Wow. I'd already done it. Um, uh, so it's, that's what people's perception is. And it's because there is a lot of crap out there. Um, so people are naturally negative. But I will say generally people fall into the negative side when they're this is from loved ones not just random people on the street but loved ones are saying it because they care about you mm -hmm. so that's nice um annoying uh maybe but it is a nice thing they're doing it from a point mm -hmm. of care 
the reality is for most of our traders is they're doing it because they want to make a better life, not just for themselves, but also those people. So I personally have got no problem with you keeping it to yourself. Like, why tell people? It's not their business. Yeah. They don't need to know. They yeah. don't need to know about it. Also, it doesn't matter. Like, yeah. just go away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So one of um, my favorite quotes is from someone who's very much a diva. Mm. Um, and I might, I'm about to say a naughty word. So if you're sensitive to those things, cover your ears. <laughs> But uh, they say, if they ain't paying your bills, pay them bitches no mind. And I love that because if they're not paying your bills, why are you paying attention to them? And yeah. are they living the life you truly want? Exactly. And if they're not living the life you truly want, if they don't actually have any experience in that realm, in mm -hmm. that sector, then they don't really know what they're talking about. In the nicest possible way, they don't know what they're talking about. So if you know that you're doing something which can benefit you and change your life, keep it to yourself. Yeah. Yeah, when I moved, this reminds me of when I moved to Indonesia to start a business. My brother told me uh, later that one of his colleagues had bet him 50 quid that I would fail within a year. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And you're always going to get comments and opinions. It's never going to be from people doing things successfully because th why would they yeah. do that? Um, and you just can't let it get to you, can you? You yeah. just have to go with it, trust the process, you, you know, do due diligence because yeah. there's loads of, you know, there's loads of property training, there's loads of Forex training. Um, there's lots of things you could get involved with, but ha if you have confidence, then just go for it. Yeah. 100% agree. So it's a really good question. And I think it, it also can be emotionally draining. Mm. So protect your own peace. Um, do you need to tell everyone? If you're married to someone, please tell them that you're going to invest in education. That's probably a smart thing to do. Mm. But bring them along for the journey. Show them what you're doing. Explain it to them. Bring them to one of our sessions mm. where we talk about it in a really realistic safe way yeah so they understand i did what that we're Lewis. Doing. yeah and now my other half has signed up as well yes he has yeah because <laughs> he yeah and i love that like what a great way to to bring someone into the yeah. into what you're doing as well yeah. um yeah absolutely love that yeah <laughs> uh, so yeah i think i think just be wise with who you share with be wise about whose opinion actually matters mm. and like you said sophie people have always got an opinion yeah yeah. and i would say join the community like yeah. we've got an amazing community at star trading who are all in the exact same position of i'm learning to trade i'm supporting and encouraging you and i found that as a business owner as well when i started my business my friends were like okay great don't really know what you're doing but okay which was nice but they don't get it they don't understand it and when i met other business owners at networking and stuff they got it they got the cash flow issues they got you know the staffing issues everything um so get that little tribe get that little community as well so you have got that encouragement yeah completely. people that actually know yeah <laughs> so what's on the uh agenda for you this week so in terms of how's your trading been going this week yeah good it's the it's the kind of holding back yeah. um from from doing too much but it, i'm i'm really enjoying it i'm really enjoying it yeah. it's my mindful time um yeah it's i'm still up <laughs> so yeah. that's good that's good yeah and um the the third strategy i'm really enjoying yeah i'm loving like just finding little ones because mm -hmm. then you can do quite well with those ones yeah. um it's quite it's quite neat and tidy the last one isn't it yeah it's so it's an interesting one because the last one the reason it's the last one we have people learn is because a lot of people find that the trickiest to mm. get their head around but there's other people like you who it becomes their favorite one um uh, yeah it's really really interesting mm. yeah what's your favorite one i always say pullbacks but that's a lie <laughs> I think this is my go-to. It's like when people ask me my favourite movie, I yeah. say The Fifth Element. And I love okay. that movie, but is it my favourite? I don't know. It. Oh, you're in for a treat. Bruce Willis at his finest. Um, uh, a brilliant movie, love it. But I just always automatically say mm. pullbacks. But I think actually reversals are probably my favourite strategy. Mm. Pullbacks are the one we teach the first, which yeah. is why I tend to say it's my favourite. But um, And it's the first one I learned, so I've got a bit of a soft spot for it. Um, but yeah, I think reversals are probably my favourite. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Well, let us know what your favourite strategy is. Yeah. Um, are you ready for a snack? I'm ready for a snack. Yeah, shall I go first? Uh, no, you went first. Yeah, you go first. It's okay. fine, yeah. Let's see what's in the bag. Oh, I'll shut my eyes. Okay. More rustling. I'm already, I'm already excited. Yeah. Okay, we're going for this one. Go. Okay, cool. Oh! Oh! I've not had these in years. I so know. for the benefit of the tape... Um, these are Disco's um, salt and vinegar flavour. Yeah, I haven't seen these since I no. was a child. I am right in thinking these are circular ones, right? I think so. Unless they've changed them. I mean, Disco's suggest 
quite a retro snack, right? Very retro snack. Well, the 90s is in right now. There we are. Maybe that's why they're back. Maybe that is, yeah. Yeah, they're circular. Mm -hmm. I remember them being really salty. Mm. Mm. I felt like they oh, used to be crispier. Oh, that was an underwhelming... Mm. It's because I feel like they were crispier. Mm. They feel Like puffier? Not puffier, just crispier. Okay. These, they're nice. I will share. Oh, um, thank oh, you. Oh, shoot, I almost dropped them. Yes. <laughs> but they're, there's... um. It's not that they're stale, but they're not crispy. Mm. Oh, no. I do like the flavour, though. That's better than I remember. Mm. They're not as really, salty. Really vinegary. But I love the vinegar. Yeah. I like it to burn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, so, surprise. Mm, not very surprised. <laughs> so, I'm going to go six. Okay. Um, taste, I'm going to go eight. Okay. Not bad. Yeah. I'm happy with no, that. solid. And again, I will demolish them. Yeah. Yeah. On the way home. <laughs> yeah. Right, let me get you your okay, one. Okay, go on. So I got you this one in light of the coin game. Oh, what's that? <laughs> Is that? Okay. I can see a plastic mouth biting a coin. Mm -hmm. Is it a Bitcoin? That Did you buy Bitcoin. me Bitcoin? No. <laughs> Not at this price. <laughs> what is it? I think it's like a bit like a gobstopper, like a bit like a dummy. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> that is a dummy, isn't it? Um, look at the camera. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um... We also can't share this one, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite tasty, actually. Is it tasty? It's just like a strawberry lolly. Oh, okay, mm. yeah. Mmm. And it's got a, a helpful lid. Yeah. So I can save it for later. Brilliant. Thank you. What's the score? Um, surprise 10. You are good at surprising yeah. me. Taste, I would go six. Oh, okay. Not yeah. fab, but doable. Yeah. Like yeah. super syrupy, sweet. Yeah. yeah. But pleasant. Brilliant. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. Well, thanks very much for joining us on this episode of the Star Trader Podcast. We will see you soon. Bye.